Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Building Subtext. I'm your host, Jim Hull. I love great stories, and I built an application to help make more of them. Today, I want to talk about what is the relationship story through line. As you get more and more into an objective narrative framework, you'll find out that there's always one of four that feels a little bit off and doesn't quite fit in with the other three. And in this case, when we're looking at the series, finding the source of conflict in your different through lines, the relationship story through line is definitely the prime candidate. So today I'm just gonna discuss what the relationship story through line is and how it differs from the other three. But first, this. Subtext is an application I built based on over 30 years of narrative study, including my two decades in the animation industry as an animator and director for Disney and DreamWorks, my seven years teaching story development at CalArts, and my practical experience helping develop projects ranging from animated television series to Canada's selection for Best International Film at the 2023 Oscars. Subtext is a wonderful learning experience and a great place to develop your next story. As a recent subscriber told me, Subtext has advanced my understanding of empiric story structure by an indescribable degree. I feel like I'm being mentored by a professor each time I sit to work on a new transit or the next through line. If you're ready to enjoy the same kind of mentorship our subscribers rave about, then Subtext is the place for you. Discover more at subtext.app. Okay, so let's look into the relationship story through line and how it's different from the other through lines. If you remember from previous episodes, those through lines are not really about the characters or the names that are attached to them, like the main character through line or the obstacle character through line, but more so about the perspective that they're meant to represent. When it comes to the four through lines, the four perspectives match up with the four different ways that we can see conflict. The objective story is the they perspective, the main character is the I perspective, the obstacle character is the you perspective. And finally, the one we're dealing with today is the we perspective. And what this means is it's almost as if the relationship itself has its own perspective, which is where a lot of people get tripped up. In previous discussions about this concept, the relationship story through line was always seen as the relationship between the main character and the obstacle character, which makes sense if you're looking at conflict from I have a problem and you have a problem, then thinking of how we, the two of us together, have a problem just makes sense. And then it even makes more sense to just cast it as an emotional argument, so that if the plot is the logical argument, then the relationship story is the emotional argument. And that really doesn't hold up. The problem with always casting it between the main character and the obstacle character is that you're leaving out opportunities to explore other types of narrative development. And there are plenty of examples where the relationship story through line doesn't include both main character and obstacle character. A really prime example of this is the film Coda. In that, the obstacle character is her teacher, yet the relationship story through line, they don't really have an emotional relationship. Not a lot of time is spent on their mentorship. He's really just there to be that obstacle character voice saying to her, you have potential to do so much more. The relationship story through line though, is carried out in the familial relationship between everybody in her family. That's where the heart of the story lies. The way that you wanna think of it is almost as if the relationship itself is a character, almost as if it exists and has its own thoughts and its own considerations and its own drives. And those drives and considerations and thoughts aren't necessarily something you'll illustrate specifically in the story, but more so you as the author are going to encode into the story. The relationship story through line tracks the growth of that character of the relationship from one instance at the beginning to where it ends up at the end. Let's talk about some key things that help you define a relationship story through line in absence or in isolation of everything else. The first thing you want to do is identify the type of relationship, where the relationship is at the beginning and where it is at the end. So either rivals to friends or therapists to closer friends or maybe best friends to enemies. Whatever sort of change that happens from the beginning to the end, you want to make sure you encode that into your story. Relationships are always growing. They're never stagnant. So if for some reason your relationship is the same exact place it is at the end than at the beginning, then you gotta work out something. And that's just the state of it. The next thing you wanna look at is the growth of that relationship 
And you want to think of it in terms of two different paths for a narrative. One is the coming together. So it's the separate parts that are uniting into a tighter bond or a bond that is dissolving. Now that doesn't mean it's just a linear path from beginning to end. You can go in and out and the relationship can shift. They can get closer, they can fall apart. And it's probably better if it is like that because then it'll be a little bit more real life. You just want to make sure at the end, when the audience looks back and sees where the relationship was at the beginning, you want to make sure there's some sort of difference. So they know that there's some kind of growth because the relationship story through line, when we look at we, we're looking at the growth. When people know that a relationship is dead is when there's no growth, complete stagnation. It's the same thing it's always been. That is a dead relationship. You don't want that in your stories. The next thing you want to make sure is that that relationship that you're exploring is completely separate from the relationship that exists between those two characters in the objective story. That's another pitfall that people fall into is they just copy the same sort of relationship that's in the objective story and then just put that in the relationship story. You're going to have a lot of crosstalk. It's not going to be very strong. You want to make sure that whatever heartfelt growth that you're looking at between those two entities you want to make sure it's something that's beyond just the protagonist and antagonist roles and however they line up in service of the objective story. For instance, in the film The One I Love, which is about a husband and wife that go off to Ojai and experience their own doppelgangers in a retreat for the weekend, you have the husband, Ethan, who has his own personal issues and why he's showing up to the therapy session. And then you have his wife, Sophie, and she has her own personal issues that she's going through. And then you have all the interpersonal dynamics between the two of them and their two duplicates. That is the objective story. But then separate from all of that is the marriage between Ethan and Sophie. That's being explored through the relationship story through line as a counter to the more objective look at relationships between the four of them and the heart of the story that's being explored is the growth of their marriage from beginning to end. That's how you can separate out the relationship story through line from the objective story through line. And then finally, the last item that you want to make sure is that you have some sort of tie back to the story form. So this is the story form for the one I love in subtext. And if I come down here and I look at the difference between the objective story and the relationship story, You'll see here two problems, two driving forces that are really similar, but yet do have something very distinct about them. So for instance, in the objective story, when we're looking at all four of them, the doppelgangers and Ethan and Sophie, the problem in the story, what's driving the plot is determining or figuring out which one is which, and also determining why this is happening and where it's coming from and what is the reason that all of this is happening to them. So that's the plot in there. And then if we come over here to the relationship story through line, you'll see in order to balance that out, you'll see a relationship story condition of cause. So determination is determining the causes or the reasons why something's happening. And then when you're just looking at cause, what you're looking at is trying to make something happen, trying to cause something to happen. You can think of the whole therapy session, which is going to this place in Ojai and doing all of this entire experience that they're going through, and then also their familiarity with each other through their marriage. You can see that the driving condition upon which this marriage is being tested or why it's growing the way that it's growing is because of this forced to try and make something happen or to try and cause some sort of growth in the relationship as opposed to just looking at the effects of it. That would be the opposite. This is what can we make happen? What can we force into play by causing something to happen? So that's how you can separate out the marriage. The marriage has a condition of cause, like trying to accelerate or to move growth in some direction. Whereas in the plot, everybody's just trying to determine what's going on and determine the causes of what's happening to them. You want to find out how everything else is related in the entire story form, find out where the relationship story through line aspects are coming through, and then discuss and discover what sort of relationships you want to focus on. So in the next video, I promise I will dive into finding the source of conflict in your relationship story through line. But I thought it would be enough just to go over how the relationship story through line interacts, how it works compared to the other three. 
how it's not what you might have read in elsewhere. You want to look at the growth from beginning to end. You want to see if they're coming closer together or further apart. And then we can start to discuss, okay, so then where is the general area of conflict? And more so, where is the general area of growth within that relationship? So if you have any questions about any of this, please leave them down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.